Today is Sunday, the third day of September 2017. A very good evening and welcome to Kivumbi 2017 on a day when Jubilee and uh, NASA locked horns over the current IEBC commissioners and their capacity to oversee the presidential election rerun. It is also a day when Chief Justice David Maraga continued to receive support both from likely and also unlikely quarters following his landmark ruling on Friday. In this live broadcast, we will dissect these issues with an esteemed panel in studio. My name is Yusuf Ibrahim and here now are our top stories tonight. Four people have gone to overturn the mandate and the verdict of 15 million Kenyans. NASA and Jubilee lock horns over IEBC in the fresh presidential election. Every decision emanating from a court of law has to be respected. And any attack on such particular rulings amount to contempt of court with catastrophic consequences. A cross-section of leaders support the Chief Justice over the Supreme Court ruling wale watu wamepiga hawakuanza na maaskari wameanza na gate wamepiga gate tukashindwa ni nini imelipuka two police officers are gunned down in ukunda and hopes for a new bamba with the construction of the region's first ever tarmac road Well, it is exactly 9 p.m. if you're just joining us. The program begins right now. Now, NASA principals insist that they will not participate in the fresh elections with the current IEBC as constituted, led by their presidential candidate, Raila Odinga. NASA claims some IEBC commissioners and officials were compromised to rig the elections and are therefore unreliable to conduct a free, fair and credible election. Chris Thairu opens up our coverage tonight with that report. It was NASA's first political rally since the Supreme Court ruling that IEBC shall conduct a fresh presidential election. <laughs> and the venue of the rally was in Nairobi County with several stopovers in Eastlands before the main rally in Madare area. And the principles led by their presidential candidate, Raila Odinga, reiterated their earlier stand that they will not allow the current IEBC to conduct the fresh elections. Kuiba was digital, lakini kunaswa was manual. The politicians said by now some IEBC officials should have been arrested and arraigned in court for bungling the presidential election. Kenya is a nation under the rule of law, a nation under the authority of God himself. Dare you go back to al -Guraya. Mimi na ndugu yangu Raila tulikuja kwa ofisi yako. Tukakwambia hii kampuni inaitwa Algurea ina uhusiano mkubwa na viongozi wa nchi hii. Na tukakwambia usiende kwao. 
Ona vile wamekuweka tabani. Algurel imechapisha makaratasi za kupiga kura na maforms ambazo hazina serial number, ambazo hazina security marks, ambazo ni za bandia. The principals insisted that they have no interest in what they termed as a Nusum Kate government and that they are ready to face their rivals in Jubilee at the ballot. We want to see a brand new list of returning officers in each of the constituencies. Wale ambao walishirikiana na wakora hatuta wakubali. Sisi hatutaki wale tunaita lords of impunity. Lords of impunity who are in authority wanaanza kusema Supreme Court ni wakora. Mwaka wa 2013 vile Raila amesema hapa hiyo court ilikuwa ya wakora. The NASA team is expected to continue with their country campaigns tomorrow even as they plan a retreat of their members to strategize on the campaign agenda. One of the NASA principals and former Bomet Governor Isaac Ruto has been missing in action since IABC declared the presidential results. It still remains unclear whether he's still in NASA or will be campaigning for the re-election of President Uru Kenyatta. Chris Tairo, KTN News in Madare, Nairobi. Meanwhile, Deputy President William Ruto has ruled out the disbandment of the IEBC ahead of the rerun of the presidential election. Ruto says calls for the reconstitution of the IEBC by NASA are a scheme to force a coalition government. Ruto spoke in Thika and in Githurai once again took on the Supreme Court of its ruling. With the Jubilee team already on the campaign trail, just two days after the Supreme Court ordered a rerun of the presidential election. <laughs> Deputy President William Ruto led Jubilee leaders in an impromptu Meet the People tour of Thika and Githurai in Kiambu County. The Supreme Court ruling has not gone down well with President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy and in Githurai. The sovereign power is with the people of Kenya. It is not with the Chief Justice and it is not with the Supreme Court. They have orchestrated and they have executed a civilian coup against the free will and the verdict of the people of Kenya and their place in history is a place of shame. But it is not only Supreme Court judges the Deputy President has issues with. High Court Judge George Odunga got a warning. And we are telling Justice Odunga, he needs to redeem himself. Kwa sababu, pale mbeleni amekuwa akitoa ruling this, ruling after that, kwa mambo ambaye inausika na mambo ya IBC. We are watching him. The opposition coalition NASA is calling for the disbandment of the IEBC to have a new look IEBC oversee the rerun. But Truto says the IEBC as presently constituted will be in charge. We will not accept interference from the judiciary on the constitutional function of IEBC to conduct elections in Kenya. The deputy president claims calls for the reconstitution of the IEBC are ployed by NASA. Those who are telling us IEBC cannot conduct elections are telling us there will be no election in 60 days to facilitate an illegitimate government of coalition between this and that side. That is unacceptable to us. The Supreme Court ordered a rerun of the presidential election in 60 days. Tunaenda kuonyesha Supreme Court ya kwamba mwananchi ndio ako na nguvu kuliko mahakama.
tunarudi mashinani na watu wangoje matokeo vile itakuwa The leaders had earlier attended a church service at the St Andrew's ACK church in Thika town Rita Tinina KTN news now, in the past two days, as you've just seen, Chief Justice David Baraga has been in the line of fire from the country's top leadership following the Supreme Court's decision to nullify the presidential election. But now Maraga is fast receiving support from likely and unlikely sources, including leaders from his native home area and beyond. They say a prophet receives no honor at home. But a section of leaders and residents of Kisi and Yamina counties have now come out in defense of Chief Justice David Kenani Maraga. Maraga is the uh, Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya. He is the head of the judiciary. The judiciary is independent. He is not subject to any directions either from Uhuru or his deputy. Maraga, we are telling you, stand firm. If a matter of that nature comes to you again, do the same thing. Do exactly what you did on Friday. Away from what might be regarded as home, leaders from the Third Way Alliance political outfit also found it prudent to come out in support of Chief Justice Maraga, lately on the receiving end of President Uhuru Kenyatta's and other leaders' utterances. Through his tirades and insults against the judges, President Uhuru confirms that he has no respect for the rule of law. President Uhuru has brought disrepute to the very high office he holds and consequently continues to offend the provisions of Chapter 6 of the Constitution which relate to leadership and integrity. Maybe he's behaving the way he is because he was the primary beneficiaries and maybe IBC was working on his behalf. Kotu boss Francis Atuoli has also termed the attacks on Maraga a reckless intrusion on independent arms of government. To our president that he should not be emotional, he should not be rational, he has no moral authority if he himself appealed to Kenyans that he will accept the results. He has no moral authority to fire and to lash at the learned judges who did a commendable job to, make, to secure this country to make sure that uh, there is peace in this country. Maraga has faced a barrage of attacks from top country leadership as the chief steward of the Supreme Court over the decision to annul the presidential vote. And now the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is tasked with conducting a fresh election within 60 days, now with about 57 days left. While most Kenyans had hoped they were done with the political season, now it seems the political drums have begun rolling, but this time round coming back with very unfamiliar tunes. Mark Namaswa, KTN News. Thank you, Mark, for that report. Now, IBC has until the 1st of November to conduct fresh polls as ordered by the Supreme Court, which nullified President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election. But what is on the IABC interest, these deadline fast approaches? And also, what are the cost implications of the fresh polls as ordered by the court? Political affairs reporter Murimi Mwangi reports. <laughs> After the Supreme Court bombshell invalidating President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election, the clock instantly started ticking to the 60 days deadline, within which electoral body IEBC has to prepare and conduct fresh polls. There was a gazettement of the election, of the, of the declaration that the president-elect is Uhuru Kenyatta. Now there will be a gazette notice to show that that election has been nullified. The next gazette notice will be setting the date of the next election and setting out the calendar, so the campaign period is also set out. By Sunday evening, IEBC was yet to gazette this date, but the 60 days window closes on the 1st of November. That will be a day after the commencement of KCPE exams, scheduled between the 31st of October and the 2nd of November. KCSE exams are subsequently set to begin on the 6th of November. Yes. Given that most polling stations are situated in public schools, IEBC could be forced to hold the elections way earlier or to persuade the education ministry to postpone the exams. Nani ya wiki ine, tunataka tuwe tumepiga kura, tumuonyeza kitendawili, 
kwamba wa Kenya ndio wanaamua viongozi wa taifa letu la Kenya. Sisi tuna tuko tayari lakini tumesema hatuwezi kurudia kwa uchaguzi na hii tume ambaye imefanya hii. I listened to the Supreme Court judgment and I didn't hear anything about the chairman of the commission in regard of what happened in the last election. But the spotlight could stand yet again at the Treasury. SIEBC drafts a budget for the fresh polls. Between the 2016-2017 and the 2017-2018 financial year, IEBC received 49.9 billion shillings for the August 8th polls. With Treasury indicating that this allocation had factored in the likelihood of a presidential runoff if there was no clear winner after the August 8th polls. Prior to the August elections, IEBC contracted Dubai-based firm Al Gurea to print 20.8 million presidential ballot papers for the 19.6 million registered voters. This is giving an allowance of 1.2 million ballot papers to cater for the spoiled votes, all at a cost of 20 shillings each. Given that only the presidential seat is being contested in the fresh polls, using the same estimates, IEBC will spend an estimated 416 million shillings on ballot papers. If we can print our money here, certificates here, uh, what is so magical about this ballot paper? I'm sure many of you voted. You must have seen. It's just the images of a Kuru court and others on an A4 uh, size paper. It was a big deal. We can actually print it here in Kenya, but whoever prints it doesn't matter. As the countdown continues to the 60 days deadline, the spotlight, it appears, will remain on the IEBC, particularly on how the Chebukati team will deal with the loopholes of electoral malpractice highlighted in court. Murumi Mwangi, KTN News, in Nairobi. Thank you, Murumi, for that report. Of course, IEBC have to go back to the drawing board as directed by the Supreme Court and oversee the repeat elections. But NASA are saying they don't want IEBC to conduct that election. And, of course, that story is going to form the basis of our discussion tonight. We have our analyst, our panel, ready in studio with us. That is Mark Bichachi as well as lawyer Nelson Harvey. But for now, let's cross over to security matters and police in Ukunda are investigating the killings of two police officers at an ACK church in Kuala County. The attackers are reported to have fled with the officers of firearms. Two police officers have been killed today by two unknown assailants as they were manning a church in the Ani town of Kuala County. <laughs> the two, police corporal Kirimin Tonga and Sergeant Frederick Mumami, are manning St. Paul's ACK church when the assailants attacked them at around 10.30 in the morning. The two gangsters also made away with two guns, an AK-47 and a G3 with some of the police uniforms. When they were being taken to Diani Beach Hostel, we, we lost one on the way and uh, the, the, the other one passed on while he was being transferred to, to Mombasa Pandi Hospital. So unfortunately, we, we lost both officers. The end motive is for criminal purpose. And so long as the guns are still there, we shall pursue these gangsters with uh, an all-impressing purpose so that we get them back. The terrified worshippers gave an account of what took place in the church as everyone scampered for safety. Kumbe watoto wengine ndiyo wameruka kwa fence na wamama, wengine wameumia watoto, wengine wamevunjika miguu, hata watoto wengine wamepotea tunazidi hata sahii tuko hapa tunatafuta watoto. Tukiandikisha majina ule anapata mtoto wa juu mwenzake anatuletea ili tuweze kuwatambua. Hata wamama ni wengi wale wameumia paka kuvunjika miguu. Walipoenda hivyo sasa hatujui baadaye walikuwa wanapikipiki lakini moja ikawa haina mafuta. Ikawa imefika pale wakawa wanaisukuma. Sema ukweli mimi si kutambua mmoja. Lakini pale walipoona pikipiki imeisha mafuta wakasukuma ikashinda. Imesemekana wameiacha hapo na wakaenda. Sasa haikujulikana zaidi hapo. Today's incident revives back the memories of almost two years ago when such a cases were the order of the day with the police vowing to bring into book all culprits involved. Tobias Chanji, KTN News, Kuala County. 
At least 40 students out of the total 51 who were injured at the Moy Girls Nairobi fire incident have been discharged. The fire that raised down a dormitory early Saturday morning led to the death of eight students. Investigations into the cause of the fire is still ongoing. Only the parents can understand the pain of losing a child. The distraught cries painting a picture of what the parents of the lost eight young lives at the Moy Girls Nairobi fire are going through. Those who survived and lived to tell the story fighting for their lives at the Nairobi Women's Hospital. For Mr. and Mrs. Wanjala, their daughter Tasha, a Form 1 student at the school, was lucky to have escaped alive with only superficial burns as the doctors explained. Tasha uh, inhaled a lot of carbon monoxide. That was her issue and for... Uh, a child under the age of 20, they needed to be under observation for 24 hours. Tasha is among other nine students who will be discharged from Nairobi Women's after spending a night under routine care. Uh, we are still having another five. Of the five, we have uh, three who we are confident will go home tomorrow. So that leaves us with the uh, two. Of the two, uh, if you recall yesterday, we talked about one who had 66% bands, and we had another one with 18% bands. So those are the two who will still uh, remain with us uh, for further management. The fire at Moy Girls, Nairobi, broke out at around 1.30 a.m. on Saturday in one of the dormitories, a dormitory believed to have been housing over 300 Form 1 students. The school's board now wants their investigations to be done to find the root cause of the fire that led to the loss of eight students. The students in the affected dormitory lost all their belongings in the fire and the school management will advise on the kind of help needed for our girls. The Parents Association has received numerous requests for help from well-wishers and wants to thank all those who have been reaching out to us. In order to facilitate well-wishers to assist the Parents Association has organized a pay bill number, which is 969-777-969-777, under the management of the Parents Association. In just 24 hours, however, there was a total of four unexplained fire incidents that were reported in various parts of the country. <laughs> Dormitories were raised down in Sigoti Complex Secondary School in Kisumu County, Chuka Boys High School in Therakaniti County and Vitale Boarding Primary School in Makweni County. Last year, 126 schools were raised down in what was described as protests by affected parties over the changes made in the education system. The major burden now rests on investigators to ascertain what exactly triggered these cases, investigations that will at least give closure to mourning parents. Raquel Mwigai, KTN News, Nairobi. Well, you've been watching Kivumbi 2017 right here on KTN News. Now it's about time we take a very short break. But when we come back, we'll have a studio interview as well as some interesting story, or should I say some frightening story by Raquel Mungai on uh, snack handlers. All that after this break. Don't go too far. Tweet of the day in association with DSTV. Visit our multi-choice offices or multi-choice accredited agents to get connected to DSTV. This is KTN News.
bado wataiba hakuna baadhi iko zokoa mbili ndio ya ageza ni mmo mmoja tu na mwenyewe hakuna kiti kimoja kinaweza katangatwa kwa kila zilivyo ivelevo kambani mimi ndipo leo nituma mimi leo nikulama mimi jambu wapi na kataka na namna hiyo na mwambie wanaizi wale watu kujua ile kiti ya maana kweli mzee unisamea hiyo Mungu akitaka kufanya kazi hiyo ya kiti yake akawa mwaka mingi wewe bana harusi Uzao watoto sita au kwa chairman bibi yako akwa rese wa nyumbani This is KTN News. Welcome back to the program. This is Kivumbi 2017 right here on KTN News. And uh, before we go straight to our interview, of course, the basis of our interview tonight, uh, we'll have everything to do with uh, IEBC at a time when NASA says it doesn't want the electoral body to oversee or conduct uh, the election that is in about 57 uh, days' time. Uh, we're going to talk to Mark Bichachi, who is a political analyst, as well as Nelson Harvey, who is a lawyer. But for now... Uh, since independence, uh, residents of Bamba Town and Kilifi County have complained of negligence by the respective governments. The main reason has been the poor infrastructure in the area, but things are about to change, as a reporter Caroline B. now tells us. Okay, it seems we have a slight problem with that story, but we'll be right back after this very short break. Don't go too far. This is KTN News. Kwa wananchi katika taifa la Kenya sehemu zote katika kaunti zetu waweze kudumisha amani na mimi uh, naomba IBC tume ambayo imepewa nafasi kikatiba kuandaa hii uchaguzi ndani ya siku 60 wafanye haraka iwezekanavyo ingewezekana hata tufanye uchaguzi wiki ujao sisi tayari tuko tayari kuhakikisha mheshimiwa uhuru kenyata amerudi kwenye kiti chake cha urais in fact round hii kwa sababu tuko na nafasi nzuri mnakumbuka pale awali sisi wengine tulikuwa na <laughs> kisasa hapa na pale <laughs> ha? <laughs> round hii sasa <laughs> kama kuna kura ilikuwa imetereza kidogo <laughs> milioni tatu na Newspaper that entertains, surprises, informs. We believe in a paper that brings you the truth clearly, concisely, without bias. 
every day. We believe in a paper about people. Real people. Inspiring stories. From near and far. We believe in a paper for everyone. That's why we're changing. Feel the change with the all-new standard. Welcome back to the program. If you're just joining us, this is Kivumbi 2017. Of course, it has been a very busy day, politically speaking. Uh, both uh, Jubilee and Nasser, the two main protagonists, are still locking horns of our IBC commissioners. So it will be interesting to find out uh, the procedures of dis disbanding uh, the electoral body. Now, according to Chapter 25 of the Constitution, commissioners can only be removed from office for a serious violation of the Constitution, including a contravention of Chapter 6 on leadership and... Uh, uh, integrity and then uh, uh, if they're also found to be incompetent or uh, bankrupt and uh, over to our next page and it will be interesting to find out how an individual seeking to remove IABC uh, officials is uh, what, what, what is uh, expected of them now uh, commissioners uh, can only be removed if uh, they're accused of gross misconduct or for physical or mental incapacity to perform the functions of their office. This is still according to uh, Chapter 25 of the Constitution. Now, over to our next page, and that is uh, what I was talking about, where an indiv individual seeking to remove IBC officials uh, must present a petition to the National Assembly uh, setting out the alleged facts constituting uh, that ground and then the National Assembly shall consider the petition, and if it is satisfied uh, that it uh, discloses a ground under the clause one, uh, they uh, they'll send the petition uh, to the president. And then, uh, there you go, and then afterwards, uh, the president, after receiving the petition, may suspend the member or office holder pending the outcome of the hearing of the complaint or uh, shall appoint a tribunal. We're going to have that uh, shortly. And then after that, the tribunal will then make a, a binding recommendations to the president who shall act on it within 
uh, 30 days. Of course, we're having uh, this because of that debate that is raging between uh, Jubilee and NASA. Jubilee, of course, uh, adamant saying that IBC will conduct uh, this uh, other election. Uh, but NASA is saying, you know, they'll hear none of it. Now, to make sense out of this, uh, we're now joined by two individuals, a lawyer, Nelson Harvey, as well as Mark Bichachi, who is a political analyst. Harvey, I'm sure you're well conversant with the law. It seems <laughs> quite a process to remove these commissioners from office. Yes, it is quite a process. Uh, and bearing in mind that uh, the Jubilee uh, sides seems to have uh, a majority in the National Assembly as well as the Senate, mm -hmm. and they do control the executive, I think it will be an exercise in intellectual futility for now to pursue the removal of the IBC commissioners. Mm -hmm. Something that cannot be effectively done within a period uh, of, of one month to enable uh, a replacement mm -hmm. in time for the next, uh, next election. Mm -hmm. I think, in my view, if I was to be asked, mm -hmm. uh, it is quite clear that uh, IBC tampered with this entire uh, transmission and uh, tallying as well as announcement of mm -hmm. the election's results in favor of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at it from that point of view, you begin to see why in their boisterous response, mm -hmm. both President Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, his deputy are insistent mm -hmm. that IBC, as currently constituted, should conduct the election. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that so, so you also agree that within the time that we have, it's not practical to get these commissioners out of office? No, it's not possible. It's, it's, not, possible. it's not possible. Now, Mark, this is where I want to bring you in. Do you think what Nasser is saying is now being populist? Because it's not practical. You know, the, the reality of the matter is, let's look at our history. In mm -hmm. 2007, we removed the electoral chair um, then. In 2013, we removed, we had a new one, and we removed him in 2016. Mm -hmm. In 2017, we've had a new one, now we are claiming we want to remove that one as well. Mm -hmm. we, we need to learn from our history and realize that it's not about changing commissioners. We need to change tact in this particular case. What do we need to do? Mm -hmm. We need to have proper checks and balances, both in terms of party agents, in terms of the judiciary, in terms of even the parties involved in this particular election, to keep the IEBC in check. Because as Javier has put it, it is impossible to, ch to change these uh, commissioners and then have a new set uh, approved by parliament, which basically is not really functional because the executive's powers during this time is also limited. So it, uh, parliament is not fully functional. You're not going to be able to push it. And even if you get people to demonstrate, even if they resign of their own volition, how are you going to replace them? The best strategy is to work with the IEBC. And if you found out what it is that they did wrong, mm -hmm. can you make sure they don't do that again? Mm -hmm. Harvey, do you think NASA is ready to work with IBC as currently constituted? Bearing in mind during the petition, during the Supreme Court ruling, uh, the judges had clearly indicated that there were very many irregularities. Uh, IBC as an institution is well structured under the Constitution and the statute. Mm -hmm. It has all the capacity to conduct a free and fair election even on a short notice. Mm -hmm. That is not in doubt. Yes. Now, what is in doubt is the capacity of the individuals there. Mm -hmm. And when uh, Chairman Chibukati came uh, to the podium and spoke to the nation, he said, when we took over as commissioners, the secretariat remained as it was before, mm -hmm. and we didn't have any control over what it was doing. Mm -hmm. Look, Chibukati is a, is a very senior lawyer, is a very elderly K K K Kenyan citizen. He speaks with a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And what you needed to decipher from what he was saying is that the people who took us where we are yes. are the secretariat. Mm -hmm. And who is the secretariat? The secretariat consists of Ezra Chiloba, it consists of uh, Praxedes Tororei, and those other individuals. And you can see some of these fellows below the rank of Chiloba mm -hmm. have been there even during the time of Kivitu. What is the way forward? In the next uh, 21 days or less, uh, the, the, the Supreme Court will give its reasoned decision mm -hmm. on what actually went wrong. And I think as day that succeeds, is the full ruling, right? yes, yes. Mm -hmm. as the day succeeds night, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see several individuals being mentioned in that judgment. Yes. My, my, my view is these fellows need to be taken to court ASAP. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if uh, they have been taken to court, both the key players, NASA and Jubilee, have to put in place mechanisms to ensure that uh, what happened on 8th of August does not happen. Now, how do you achieve this? First of all, uh, Safran Mofo 
who was behind the Kim system cannot be allowed to oversight the transmission anymore. The mm -hmm. system is compromised. Al Guraya cannot be allowed to print the ballot papers anymore. Mm -hmm. Ballot papers can be printed at government printer. Yeah. The transmission can be done uh, using uh, the, the Postal Corporation of Kenya or mm -hmm. any uh, courier. Mm -hmm. So that it's, it's quite <laughs> evident we will not have uh, an electronic transmission. Mm -hmm. if, 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 uh, if NASA will be gullible enough to accept another electronic transmission, mm -hmm. the results will be torpedoed the same way they were torpedoed the other time. Now that the electronic system has failed, let's mm -hmm. go back to money. Uh -huh. we, 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 we collect the results of the constituents. These are all Italian, options, right? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. We collect the results of the constituents' tiling uh, centre. Uh, the returning officer should travel from that constituency and come to Nairobi mm -hmm. in the company of two agents of Jubilee, two agents of NASA, and the policemen. Mm -hmm. There are only 290 constituencies. Then they come to Bomas or whatever place will have been designated as the National Tiling Center, and each and every of those 290 returning officers reads their results in public, mm -hmm. and then they are tabulated mm -hmm. and a decision made. Yes, and I'm glad you both have agreed that, you know, getting these commissioners out of office is not practical within 60 days. Mark, you've had uh, Javier saying that, you know, this printing job should be given to the government printer. NASA itself didn't have faith in Algore, which is an international company. Do you think they're going to trust government printer? You know, Javier has shocked me. I, I always <laughs> thought he's older than me, mm. but maybe his memory is fading. Javier, I'll remind you Please. that at the height of rigging in this country, it was the transportation of ballot papers and uh, forms mm. that led to alter alter uh, alterations of those forms and ballot staffing. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you the truth, the distance between Naivasha and Nairobi is very long for the people who want to use those same police to hijack those ballot papers to swing an election on either side. Mm -hmm. The Kenya needs to remember that the reason why we procure cured these kits to be able to transfer data quickly was to shorten the time between which most of those forms used to be manipulated. Mm -hmm. So let us not throw away the baby with the water. The mm -hmm. water is dirty. What is the dirty water? The dirty water is this. The case was based on the fact that, that the text message came through before the uh, scanned form came through, mm -hmm. the, meaning that the results were not verified. So what they need to fix is the verified data. Mm -hmm. It is actually to NASA's advice advantage to keep the Kim's kit in play because they have already found what was wrong with the system. Mm -hmm. They have found out what was wrong with the transmission. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Keep the, the, the playing field as it is. Mm -hmm. Do not allow there to be an opportunity for things to be changed. And mm -hmm. if you go that route, Harvey, I will tell you for free that it will go back to 1992 where ballot papers used to come out Harvey as one in Shihoe village. Mm -hmm. And by and the I, time he gets to Nairobi, uh -huh. uh, Yusuf and, who uh, was uh, running in Othista and is uh -huh. now the MP. Now, now, <laughs> now, Harvey, I'll go back to your comfort zone, which is of course matters law, but before that, uh, NASA were very vocal, talking about, you know, IBC should be disbanded. And in today's rally, uh, they made fresh demands. They were targeting or zeroing in on the IBC CEO, Ezra Chiloba. Is this some sort of a new strategy from NASA? No, it's not a new strategy. Uh, for, for a long period of time, mm. uh, Ezra Chiloba has been targeted uh, as the person uh, on whose shoulder the highest responsibility for manipulation mm -hmm. rests. In fact, uh, I, I, I think... If you look at the manner in which he conducted himself in the procurement of the al contract, nothing can be clearer uh, as that in respect of how sterilized the environment is. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, the popular view is Ezra Chiloba is the fulcrum behind the manipulation and interference with the, with, with the Kim system. He, he should be the first one to be charged. Mm -hmm. I think there, there are no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. He should be the first one to be charged. Mm -hmm. When he's out of the picture, of course, uh, arrangements ought to be made to ensure that the election is conducted within the 60 days. But let people take a plea. Let people uh, await their trial whilst they are in remand. It's only by doing so that we will not have a repeat performance where somebody is working for the IBC mm -hmm. on trust of the public, interferes with the popular will of the Kenyans, mm -hmm. and is manipulated by a player in an electoral contest to achieve a desired outcome, which in all practical purposes is a coup. In fact, we can, see, we can hear them uh, making a lot of noise that 
the, the judiciary has conducted a civilian coup. No, mm -hmm. it is them who conducted a computerized coup. Mm -hmm. And to that extent, therefore, this must be put to an end as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Do you think Nasser's new, fr these fresh demands they're bringing up by zeroing in on Ezra Chiloba, uh, do you think they've realized that it's not possible or practical to get these commissioners out of office? Are they choosing their battle wisely now? I think even just based on what ruling we will get, uh -huh. um, obviously there will be a lot of people within the IEBC functional staff, that's the secretariat, and the people who have been hired at, uh, by IEBC at the various stages. Uh -huh. There is internal mechanisms within IEBC to even discipline their members, even before you go the court direction. Uh -huh. So I think it's a smarter move in terms of targeting someone who's a CEO versus a commissioner, because a commissioner requires um, the legal process that you talked about before. Four. Now, that, that being said, um, the ladies of Kenya will be very sad because it will have gone from Chiloba to Chilobe to that's, Chilobai. That, that, that's, you know what I mean? That's a totally different debate. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, uh -huh. that's just on a light note. Mm -hmm. On a serious note, what needs, what needs to happen and what NASA needs to get the very, very right very quickly mm -hmm. is they need to campaign and not fight IEBC. Those two things, they need to separate. They can have their lawyers and their, 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 their party officials deal with IEBC. Um, separately from what it is that their campaign is. You cannot continue to make the IEBC the center of your campaign because what NASA needs and desperately needs is to have its people come out to support them mm -hmm. and not depress the same people because the message will be we did it again what stops it from happening again mm -hmm. so what you do you've got to give them a message of hope you understand mm -hmm. and fighting IEBC is not going to deliver that for uh, for, for NASA. Harvey immediately after the ruling we had a briefing from the IEBC chair that is Wafula Chibukati saying that he's going to uh, handle conduct some sort of investigation and find the officials who are uh, culpable do we expect to see heads rolling in the next few days well, if sufficient pressure is put uh, by the public uh, to ensure that uh, the results are uh, achieved, I think we may reach that, that end. Mm -hmm. I, I want to take you back uh, during the hearing of this election petition in response to the complaint that uh, certain state officers were being used in the campaign. Mm -hmm. the, the IABC lawyer said, uh, yes, that came to our attention. We notified the director of public prosecution to look into the matter. Mm -hmm. We are aware that the director of public prosecution instructed the director of criminal investigation to take action. Mm -hmm. But look, these this, this two uh, entities that uh, IBC was talking about, they are entities that are within the full control of the Jubilee machinery. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect the director of public prosecution, you cannot expect the director of criminal investigation to go and arrest uh, Honorable Mwangi Kiunjuri mm -hmm. or Honorable Musheru or uh, many other uh, of those uh, ministers who are accused of, uh, of participating mm -hmm. in this. But anyway, I think uh, the decision by Justice Maraga could be something that many other public officers need to emulate. Uh, Kiraiko Tobiko is an accomplished lawyer. It's only for, for, a, for, 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 for a few years lately mm -hmm. that he has been a big disappointment. It is his responsibility to wake up very early in the morning on Monday or Tuesday, go to IABC, look at the reports that were filed in court. The, the Kim's uh, Sava uh, scrutiny report was filed in court. Mm -hmm. Make steps. Recommend uh, quick investigations on these individuals. Individuals can be investigated within a period of two days. Mm -hmm. Let them be charged. Otherwise, we'll only have one saint in the name of Justice Maraga who is prepared to sacrifice his, his life and his career, mm -hmm. yet every Kenyan is determined to compromise the system. Those officers are supposed to be independent officers. So it is therefore a very heavy responsibility mm -hmm. that Kiriako Tobiko must undertake with extreme dispatch. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, all gains that have been made in respect of the decision that, is, that was given by the Supreme Court yeah. will be lost within a few days. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mark, hypothetically speaking, let's say the NASA leaders uh, remain with what, whatever they've said, that they don't want IBC to conduct uh, these uh, repeat elections. What do you think is going to happen? 
Well, you know, the thing is, um, as we've determined before, it's very difficult to find a legal way around removing the commissioners in the time that has been stipulated by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. um, they have two options, basically. Number one um, is to go the mass action route. Now, the problem with the mass action route is that it depresses its own supporters because you'll go there day one, nothing happens. Day two, nothing happens. Week three, week four. And then let's remember that we do not necessarily have the full 58 days towards the election, the mm -hmm. IEBC could come out and say that we're having elections by the end of the month or by early next month. So they do not have the luxury of time. So that might not be a viable option. What I predict that NASA probably, if they wanted to be wise, would do is leave the legal and the technocratical fight to their party uh, technocrats, the, the clever people, the, their lawyers, the, mm -hmm. their strategists, to fight the IEBC fight mm -hmm. while they go on the campaign trail and try to energize their base to show up and vote in large numbers. Because one of the things that is known um, worldwide about uh, election rigging and election manipulation is the more people turn out, the less chance you have mm -hmm. for any form of manipulation because they feel that 90-98% uh, mark. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do if you are NASA is you want a lot of people to turn up and vote. You do not necessarily want a lot of people to turn up and cry foul on the streets. These two things, they need to choose which strategy they are, they are picking mm -hmm. and they need to choose it quickly. And speaking of lawyers, we have Harvey here with us. So, Harvey, do you think, what are some of the options out there for, for NASA? Well, uh, it was quite evident that uh, IBC did not want to give full disclosure mm -hmm. to enable uh, a complete scrutiny of the Kims. Yes. I think the most important thing that uh, NASA must undertake right now is to initiate litigation as soon as possible mm -hmm. for a complete examination of, of the Kims uh, machine. And this they are entitled to under the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And the moment we are able to ascertain for a fact what went wrong in Kims and if that which went wrong went wrong intentionally, mm -hmm. we will be able to come to the root of this problem. Because look, the entire election was conducted in a very good manner until up to the point of transmission. Mm -hmm. And uh, the investment by the people of Kenya on Kims is a colossal amount of money. Mm -hmm. This Kims is supposed to sustain the election not only today, but subsequent elections. And if we are going for an election with a defective transmission machine, then we are repeating the same mistake. Mm -hmm. So first thing first, Kims must be opened. Uh, if anything is to go by, Al Guraya must be surcharged. Mm -hmm. That 1.2 extra ballots that were printed, mm -hmm. these, uh, uh, these, these forms that do not appear to have a serial number, these forms that appear not to have a barcode or a watermark uh, uh, indicator, mm -hmm. where did they originate from? And this has to be done within a short period of time mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, much as they prepare for the election in the manner in which my colleague well, has One indicated. might say that is now what under the bridge because we're heading to a fresh election. Well, uh, you, you keep on crossing this bridge, mm -hmm. so however much the water passes, uh -huh. you need to ensure that the bridge is sustainable. Uh -huh. And this is the most important thing that the mass uh, put a pillar on right now. Let's talk about the uh, petitions from these other leaders. You know, they, uh, people who've lost the governor's position, they're those who've lost uh, the MP's position. So, Mark, from your own observation, immediately the Chief Justice and, of course, the bench invalidated President Uru Kenyatta's election. Do you think we can see some sort of an avalanche petitions? Let me tell you, being the businessman that I am, I'm, I'm hoping Harvey can give me his job, a job in his law firm because <laughs> the floodgates for litigation are going to open quite literally um, coming Monday. Why? Because let's remember, a lot of, there were 12,000 candidates yeah. who did not get into office. Those are 12,000 possible litigants mm -hmm. in the next, and it has to be settled within the next six months. So there's a huge probability that a lot of these governors, MPs, and people who run from those offices are actually scared for the positions because of the litigations that are coming. What will be interesting to note, though, is between NASA and Jubilee, who will be able to harness the energies and the powers of those who came number two and number three in the various positions. Mm -hmm. That's where the game is going to be played. When could, could uh, NASA, for example, convince someone to join their side and say, you know what, it was stolen from me? Or could you believe, convince people to tell them that, you know what, NASA has nothing for you 
come and join us? That is going to be the question. So there's going to be a lot of litigation for sure. But how that litigation is going to play out in the political field, that remains to be seen. And it depends on the strategic progress of either side. You feel that, Harvey? Absolutely. Look, there is a very big comparison between what happened now and what happened in 2007. 2007, mm -hmm. the entire process was interfered with to create the impression that Kibaki mm -hmm. was winning as against Raila. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, the, the Tarakanitis, the, 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 mm -hmm. the Juja, uh, the, the Tiati mm -hmm. came up. Mm -hmm. And it looked like somebody has gone back uh, uh, many years uh, mm -hmm. behind and replicated what happened. And much as a petition was filed against the election of uh, uh, retired President Kibaki, it wasn't pursued mm -hmm. because of the eventual uh, coming into place of the Grand Coalition. But most of those election petitions that survived the technical threshold of dismissal mm -hmm. for want of service were, were, were determined in favor of the petitioners. Yeah. It is therefore my, my, my view, bearing in mind, upon, uh, bearing in mind the theory mm -hmm. that was successfully espoused uh, on behalf of Raila, about this consistent margin of, uh, of 11%, mm -hmm. it is most likely that the same formula was applied in many of the strongholds where NASA appears to have lost uh, key, key, key governors, mm -hmm. key senators. So basically saying some of these politicians might as well have strong cases. Absolutely. Now, uh, one final question. There have been a lot of confusion between uh, the ruling, of course, that was uh, provided by the court. Uh, what we're heading to in 57 days, I believe, uh, it's a rerun, right? It's not a runoff. So do we expect other individuals also con to contest in this election for the presidents? Now, uh, the, there is a confusion that was created by the 2013 decision in Raila versus, uh, versus Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. that, 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 uh, that Supreme Court indicated that in the event that there will be another election, it's only those individuals who participated in the petition that will be allowed to participate in the first, first mm -hmm. election. Look, that decision was erroneous because you cannot bind individuals who are not party to a particular case on a, on a decision made therein. If you are to ask for my honest legal opinion, mm -hmm. there is no preclusion to all those presidential candidates who participated in this contest in again participating to be in barred the from contesting because most people are most people are surprised when third way alliance presidential candidate Ekuro Okot said that he's going to be on the ballot uh, this time round mark before i get to your final uh, comments we're back in campaigns again yes absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely we're back in campaigns um i am looking at the both uh, coalitions i don't think they've gotten their heads uh, quite in the game there's a lot of pain and a lot of um, joy and there's no clear strategy yet in terms of what do you go back uh, with a message to your electorate about mm -hmm. how are you going to maintain these people that you proverbially won in the last election and then which data are you going to use to even map out what it is that you you won because now everything that you won or lost is is up for contention mm -hmm. so the strategists are sitting in the back room they're trying to look at the numbers and they're also trying to see how do we turn this particular ruling into our advantage mm -hmm. how do we take that that ruling and turn it into an advantage for Urumigai Kenyatta Mm -hmm. How do we take it and turn it into an event of advantage for Raila Molodinga? Mm -hmm. Those are the questions that are happening. I don't think they've settled yet because they're making a lot of uh, what I call political hot air statements, mm -hmm. but it's going to settle down pretty soon and they'll get down to the core of campaigning. Your final comment, Harvey, because it seems uh, people on the house on the hill are not yet settled. Well, finally, mm -hmm. uh, NASA has been able to release its final presidential tally which clearly indicates that uh, Raila Odinga won with a very commanding lead of almost 1.7 million votes between him and Huru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Now, in my view, what Raila Odinga and his team must do with extreme, uh, uh, with, with extreme conviction is to go and ensure that those individuals who voted for him are still available to vote. Mm -hmm. And this time, please adopt the poll. <laughs> Don't make us go back to the lamentation we gave on that, uh, on, on that fateful Thursday and the subsequent Friday when we all lost hope because it's quite clear that the chest thumping on the part of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and, uh, and William Ruto is intended to scare the support base of Raila. Mm -hmm. It is quite clear that these fellows do not have the numbers. They mm -hmm. didn't have the numbers. What Raila and his team must do is to protect the numbers and ensure that the turnout 
is so enormous. Mark, very briefly, let, because let we're me, almost out me, of time. Let me, very just, briefly. Let me just mm. correct Harvey on this matter. Mm -hmm. It would be very foolish for any strategist to walk into this next election thinking that eight of them won. Mm -hmm. There is no evidence. The, the fact that the judiciary ruled mm -hmm. the way it did tells you, like in 2007, you can't tell who was the winner. If you assume Raila won, you are wrong. If you assume Uhuru won, you are wrong because as a strategist, you start on a worst case scenario mm -hmm. where they both lost. And now of course, they have to fight to that, win. And that is why we have an election. Thank yes. you very much, Nelson Harvey, for your input. Uh, Always a pleasure to have you on board, Mark Bichachi. Well, over to our next story. And since independence, residents of Bamba Town in Kilifi County uh, have complained of negligence by the respective uh, governments. The main reason has been uh, the poor infrastructure in the area, but things now have uh, changed. Uh, take a look. Safari, oh yeah. <laughs> Safari, Bamba, ni it was a song composed by The Mushrooms, a popular band in the 1980s, explaining how difficult it was to travel to Bamba in Kilifi County owing to the poor state of the road. The journey would take up to three days or more. This song, honorable members, now needs to be recomposed to Safari a Bamba Nirero. Yeah. Yeah. But all that could be a tale of the past. Once construction is complete, construction of the road linking Mariakani, Bamba and Kilifi was commissioned in March this year. <laughs> Sinking in 2.1 billion shillings into the pocket of the taxpayer. The road, which has been in a poor state since independence, is now 50% complete. And we are looking probably sometime towards the uh, third quarter next year we should be able to complete and deliver 45 kilometers. It's a great achievement, and especially for the local resident, it has historical significance, again, when that road is completed. A look at Bamba Town depicts a township of slow development, little activity and slow business. The road is yet to roll in here. However, construction is underway and the tarmac is 25% done. Locals are already optimistic about the establishment. They have already started ripping big from the project. The construction has provided employment to the local youth and once complete, the Mariakani Bamba Road will be the only tarmac road in Ganze constituency of Kilifi County. Caroline B, KTN News. Well, over to the story that I'd promised you earlier, and the sight of a snake slithering in the proximity of any neighborhood attracts only one reaction panic. But did you know that for some, the sight of a snake provides hope for another day at work? Our reporter Raquel Muigai caught up with Elijah Kiyoko, a snake handler at the Nairobi Snake Park. And uh, if you're one of those who are faint-hearted, be cautioned. It goes without saying that snakes and human beings cannot stay under one roof. Even religious narratives have explained the origin of the abiding antipathy between humans and snakes. This here is Brown House Snake, one of the estimated 100 snakes here at the snake park. But despite snakes being labeled as the biggest enemies to humans, Elijah Kiyoko understands too well what it means to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Welcome to Elijah's World, where part of his job description at the snake park is taking care of the snakes. Snakes that are too small and that cunningly appear friendly, and snakes like the python that are too big for him to handle alone. Kona miaka ishilini na saba, nikifanya i kazi, 
na sijawahi kuumwa na nyoka hata kama haina sumu sijawahi kuumwa Elijah begins his day as early as 7 a.m. where he gets to do a routine checkup on all the snakes among other reptiles in the park This involves checking on whether all snakes are present and in a good state He knows that handling a snake in the morning has its advantage as they are often inactive because of the cold However, that does not necessarily mean that he is free from experiencing a venomous deadly bite from his unusual friends. Nafaa miwani kwa sababu huyu ni red spit cobra. Anatema mate na anauma. Na na anatema mate kama 10 meter. Unatakiwa uwe mbali kwa 10 meter. Na lazima nitumie graph stick kwa sababu huwezi weka huwezi kupeleka mkono umushike. Lazima tutumie graph stick kushika rabu ushike na mko na mkono. Contrary to popular belief, snakes here still have their venom, but anti-venoms are available in the park just in case of any accident. Walking around snakes may not be your conventional job choice and he remembers how tough his first days at the job was. Unaota usiku ukiwa na umwa na nyoka, unaota ukiwa na kimbizana na unakimbizana na nyoka. Eh namna hiyo. Lazima uwe na uoga tena wote usiku ukisasoya mpaka upitie ngumu ngumu mambo mangumu ngumu but for him taking care of animals was an interest that grew ever since he was a child an interest he pursued that also brought along its challenges watu wanaongopa wewe wewe ni kama uko peke yako si unaona sasa nikitoa sasa mnatoroka mnaniacha sasa mnataki mnataki mimi na wengine hataki kuongea na mimi hataki nikae karibu nao sasa kitu kama hiyo. Elijah has had a chance of bringing his children to work with him and experience his haze his children enjoy. And as absurd as it may sound, Elijah also has a favorite snake among them all. Royal Bopa alikuwa nyoka very smart. Naye ni malitati. Yeye mm-hmm. yeah, kwangi naye na aumi na afanye chochote. Yeye yeah, tena kwa na mawa kuna wewe ukimwangalia una unapenda. With many snake farms coming up and the reaping tourism benefits that come along with it, Elijah's advice is simple for all who would like to venture into his world. Passion, discipline and dedication in one's work that will help you make a better life. Rakel Mugai, KTN News, Nairobi.